everyone. Welcome to Book Trib's 15 Minutes with, a Merrill Moss Media production. Today we're thrilled to welcome New York Times and USA Today bestselling author Lorelai James. Lorelai writes everything from Western to contemporary romance to erotica and new adult, all things that we love here. Most recently she released book one in the Rough Riders Legacy series, Unbreak My Heart, and book two in the New You series, Just What I Needed. And out today, most exciting, is A Thousand One Dark Nights novella, Strung Up, which is a part of her Blacktop Cowboys series. Is that right? This is the Blacktop yes. Cowboys, right? Welcome, Lorelai. Uh, it's so great to talk to you today. Thank you for having me. I'm glad it worked out this year that we Absolutely. get to do Absolutely. <laughs> I know. We missed you last year. A couple of technical difficulties, but we made it work this year, so it's super exciting. Um, yes. Can you bring us up to speed a little bit on Blacktop Cowboys? Black Top Cowboys, uh, and your latest novella, which we're talking about today, which is Strung Up. Well, the Black Top Cowboys series started out as sort of a, an ability for me to put these cowboys that I was writing about on the road, and it didn't, okay. it didn't turn out um, that way. So I sort of ended up setting them in a small town in Wyoming, which is, you know, it was good, but I wanted right. to do something different. And so... You know, with A Thousand and One Dark Nights, it's been great because I've been able to take some of those characters who don't have enough storyline for an entire book mm -hmm. and give them a happily ever after and move them to Colorado. And okay. um, so that's been, you know, it's been good. It's a different, it's a different format. It's hard for me to write short. Okay, interesting. <laughs> so writing novellas is, is a challenge, you know, and I want to, I want to challenge myself. So, I mean... And, and especially with this book, writing a male male romance, mm -hmm. I've written I've written a male male female menage with with the happily ever after okay. in the Rough Rider series, but I've never just tackled a straight male male. And I always wanted to do it, and they gave me the opportunity, and I said yes, let's do it. So that's awesome. So can you tell us a little bit who are some of the familiar characters we're coming into contact with? Um, who do we know the main characters? Are they characters from the from the rest of the series? Uh, Cress Grant, what is there's three Grant brothers, and the, these are the first three books in the series. And um, he was in Stripped Down, and he had just recently come out of the closet. Okay. And so he has he has a boyfriend that he meets at the wedding, and so this picks up two years later, and this boyfriend has died. Oh. Um, and so he's oh. been grieving for you know quite a he's been grieving for a while. And um, this guy from his past, who nobody, this is a character that has kind of had a bad reputation in the full length book series. He's kind of an ass. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he's been, he's in the closet. He's been in the closet, but he also, you know, considered himself bisexual, which. Okay. And so it was fun to take a character that's not. I don't want to say lovable, but someone who needs to be changed and redeemed, and that, and I got to do that with Breck. Breck is the character, is the other male character. So I have Chris and Breck, and you know they're working it out. <laughs> Very nice. So September 2014, you wrote your first novella for A Thousand One Dark Nights, um, and today you're releasing your third. What's it like being a part of the Thousand One Dark Nights family? Are you enjoying it? I love it. It is awesome. They're so supportive. They kind of let us do what we want, but we're very um, cohesive as a group. We get to promote one another and read one another's books, and it's it's fun, but it's also no pressure thing. I mean, it's not like you have to, you have to, you have to. Right. And the other thing is that we, we're all friends to some extent, okay. and so we want to promote one another's books because we, you know, admire each other as writers. So. Of course, of course. Um, was there a book or maybe a TV show or anything that inspires any of your books or your storylines? Um, anything, or do you just kind of, does it just all come to you? <laughs> Nothing really. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just kind of there. And especially when okay. you're working with characters that have been in previous books, you kind of have an, you have a little bit more idea of what you're going to do with them. But you know, they always surprise me. You know, I think that I know where something's going and then boom, you know, in walks the, in mystery, we say in walks the man with the gun, you know, it's, it's something along those lines that happens that I'm never prepared for. Oh, so, so interesting. Um, did you start out writing in the erotic romance genre or was there, a, where did you start? How did you get started and were you surprised by it? I started out as a mystery writer. Okay. I'm still I'm still a mystery writer, and I always wrote both. And um, 
I, I started out contemporary and then I thought, oh, I'm going to probably end up in erotic suspense because, you know, mis you know, because of the mystery side and stuff right. and the erotic suspense did not work out very well oh, for me. Oh, interesting. That's actually my least selling book. I mean, I like, I like the series and I'd love to do it, but it's just not, there's just not really the audience there for it. Okay. And so I was reading some Westerns and these people are getting everything wrong. I mean, it's just like. Have you even been to the West, you know? Oh, that's and amazing. And I, so I decided that I was going to write my own Western. Okay. I was going to make it a little bit more realistic. And I was going to make it as uh, sexy and dirty as possible. I love it. And I put Mail Mail in there in 2006 when no one was doing Mail Mail. So 10 yeah, years ago. Absolutely. And the first publisher rejected it. And then the second publisher took it. And so, ironically enough, I'm now with the publisher that rejected it. <laughs> They're wishing they wouldn't have. But right. That kind, of started, that kind of started me on the road, and we had no idea how it was going to be received. Okay. And it's just kind of gone from there, you know. But I, I'm also, because I'm so diverse, I also thought Cowboys is not the only thing I want to write. I want to write, you know, I'm interested in martial arts, and um, I'm interested in, you know, just sexy, fun, contemporary. Yeah. So so do you, have, do you have, like, a favorite that if, you know, or – it's, is it spread out for you? Like you really just like dabbling in all of them? I really like dabbling in all of them because it stretches me as a writer. Mm -hmm. And especially since I've been writing the Need You series is first person. And I hadn't written in first person since the, all of my mysteries are in first person. Oh, and so okay. to, write a, to write a romance in first person, I mean, you know, I'm proven I can do it. And that's the other thing. When I was getting ready to start this book, I contacted Liz of... Uh, you know, of the dark nights and, and said, um, I really think I need to write this in first in a dual first person. And the other roped in and stripped down are both in, in third person. And she said, I think that's probably a really good idea. And I'm glad she said that because that's not always the case. I think right. a lot of times if you're stuck into doing third person, your readers, that's what they expect. And I do know that there are readers who don't read first person. They just, it's not their thing. Hmm. Interesting. I never thought of that. I kind of just take the book for what it is. I never, I don't look particularly for that. I guess as a reader, that's not something that is, right. is my main objective. Um, but I didn't realize that there were those out there that do. Very interesting. Um, did you, what about reading for you? You know, as, as I just said, I have obviously certain things that I like to read. What do you have as a preference as a writer? What do you look to read? Something that's not going to piss me off in the first kid, in the first chapter, which that's is it difficult to find? Oh, it's been the case lately. I have oh. been really unhappy with just about everything that I've read, and you know, obviously, I'm not going to name names. I'm not going to name genres, but it's difficult for me because my my reading time is so limited that I don't want something that's going to pull me out of the story on the first page, and you know regardless of its characterizations that are right. wrong, or misspellings or whatever. So um, I tend to go, I do try new authors. I, I go back to the, you know, the tried and true, um, such as J.D. Robb never disappoints me. Um, yeah. and, then, so the, and then there's some new authors like Serena Bowen. I love her stuff yep. and, I love El, and I love L. Kennedy. And so every time I pick up one of their books, I know that... Um, I'm not going to be disappointed. Gonna get and those, and those are more. recent. Those are recent ones. So, so what about the the TBR list that you have going right now? Is there one and you know that you haven't gotten to that haven't disappointed you yet? What do you have kind of next on the list to to give a read to? Um, trying to think. I actually I just got JD Robb's new book in the mail today. I ordered it in hardcover because oh, yeah. I. Could, because her stuff's in hardcover. Yes. Plus, you know, I'm a I'm also a consumer, and I have a hard time spending fourteen ninety nine <laughs> on a digital book. I so, feel the same way. So when Absolutely. I can get I can get that hardcover for eighteen ninety nine. That's where I'm going to go. So she's the one that she's on my my list of that's the next book I'd really love to dive into. I have a lot of research books that I need to get going on. So <laughs> a little bit of everything. That's great. Right. So in Rough Riders, you are up to book 16 and a half from what I saw on your website. Do you ever worry of that you're at the end or you're never going to get to the end? Are there ever, when, you're, when you run a series that long, are there ever any kind of concerns 
or is there just always more to tell? Are you are you keeping it going as long as possible? I ended that series. Okay. With book 16. And I've done um, two novellas. I've done a novella after the fact, and I would like okay. to do a catch-up, like catch-up novellas possibly for some of the characters. But yeah, it was, it was hard to end that series at 16, and that's... You know, it's it's daunting for a reader to even if the books are you know two ninety nine, three ninety nine, whatever. It's daunting to look at you know sixteen books in a series and say, I'm going to have to read all of those if I want to get caught up. So um, that was a conscious choice, and because on my mystery side of my career, I had two series end that it was not my choice. <laughs> so I thought this is going to be the one time that I'm really going to get to end it on my own terms. Is that kind of length of a series what you look to do for most of your series? Or are some of them you just you know three or five or whatever is gonna is gonna call it quits? I think you know when part of the reason with sixteen is that I with sixteen books is that it touched every single um, family member that I wanted to. Okay. But when I went and looked at my own reading, the only series that I have continued with after book sixteen is is in death. Okay. Everything else is like, oh, I, I love this author, but there's other things that I want to read. And I thought, well, people are going to be saying that about me. You know, I want to do something different. And I think that it would be kind of boring to be stuck in the same world the whole time. I mean, I have a lot of, I have more ideas than I have time, which I know a lot of authors say that, but it's true. Okay. Interesting. So now Blacktop Cowboys, um, you have book eight coming out in November. Uh, Hang Tough, and book three in the Need You series coming out in April, which I know is like eons away, but um, that's going to be called, that's called All You Need. What can you kind of tell us about both of these? Um, let's see. We'll go with Hang Tough first. Is, sure. Is uh, Tobin, who has been kind of everybody's favorite Boy Scout. Mm -hmm. He's a little... Everyone thinks he's a little naive, and he kind of, the mud lilies who are in this series are a bunch of older women. Um, they kind of run him ragged, and and so he's, you know, in book seven, he was like, I'm ready, to, I, this town is too small, there's not enough women, I need to get out of town and, you know, have a, have a life. And so someone comes back into town and makes him think, hey, maybe this is worth staying around for. And so that's um, Hank Tough, and then... All you need is Annika's book, um, she, Annika Lund's book, and that's the one I'm finishing the edits on right now. And then okay. I've already started Jensen's book, which is book four, which releases in August. Oh, great! Okay. So that's the one. That's the one I'm working on right now is uh, Jensen's book, and I'm trying to think of the title. I <laughs> have title blackout right now. Um, when I need you. Oh, great! Okay. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. What about any, um, for, for fans that are looking, you know, I know book signings are so important for some fans and they just love even to just come out and say hi and, and get a, get a signature. What, do you have anything going on coming up that people can come out and see you? I'm at Shameless in Orlando in October with a bunch of other authors, and that's going to be a really great event, and it's okay. the last event that I'm doing this year. Um, I've been to Florida three times <laughs> for three separate events, so um, oh, wow. Florida's probably kind of sick of me, but <laughs> it's, it's an exciting event to be able to be part of, um, and that's the last one. But even if people don't you know, buy the book, I get a lot of people that come up and say, oh, well, I have all your books, but they're on Kindle. You know, and so, so I've signed Kindles, but I signed a bookmark or whatever. I just, you know, they shouldn't feel bad that if they're not going to buy a book, they should come up and talk to me. Yeah, and absolutely. Um, what about, I'm curious about maybe something, uh, a genre that you wouldn't think to try, but but would it, it would never be the first thing you would want to write for. But if you were thinking you would go way outside, is there a genre that you would pick um, to write for? Um, yes. Young adult. Yes. I have, okay. I, have a couple, I have a couple of ideas. The only problem with that is I would have to take on a third name simply because, oh. uh, you know, the Laurie Armstrong is the mystery and Lorelai James is the romance. And so I would really have to take a third name on because of, um, of because of the erotic portion mm -hmm. of that. You know, and, and I do have, you know, parents who say, uh, she writes erotic. I don't want my kid reading this. You know, I wouldn't have it be a secret necessarily. Right. But 
I think that that, and that would be the one reason why I wouldn't do it. It's just because it's already hard enough to maintain two personas. I can imagine. Yeah. So what, um, what about when you're in your writing process, are there things that you've found that have kind of changed over time? Things that, you know, you go back or maybe you, you flip through some of your early books and you say, oh, wow, I can really tell that my writing's changed. Have you stayed consistent? What have you found out about yourself? Um, yeah, I think the writing has changed. I think it gets deeper. I, you know, and readers tend to be real honest about what they think about your books. <laughs> and I saw a review the other day for just what I needed and the, and they said, we like this so much better than the first book because it's so much deeper. And I'm thinking, because you know the world now. You know, right. you honestly can't, you can't judge anything by that mm-hmm. first book, to be totally honest with you, just because you're building that world. And um, so I'm lucky enough that I'm getting things reverted to me that I can go back in. And, you know, if there's anything that bothers me is kind of smooth, smooth it out mm-hmm. or whatever, and see how that works out. But you know, it's it's surprising to me how well I think the writing holds up. I mean, absolutely, very interesting. Do you ever notice um, a similar question? What about in in series that you follow? Do you notice changes like that, where as the reader you might be thinking something like that, or are you always thinking kind of with with a writer's mind? Um, I know I can actually step outside and just be and just be a pure reader and and but I gotta say that it's got to be someone who can tell a hell of a story that that's gonna put me in their world and I know that they're not going to cheat me that's the other thing too is that some of the some books that are out especially in romance it's not a happily ever after I don't want to read it I mean you know and if I have to read 27 and you know 27 28 installments of one book if it's not in death (laughs) that you know that's not something that I'm looking forward to either because I have such a limited amount of reading time like I'm on book six of the uh outlander yep series and I love her writing and I love her books and I love her world building but it is so daunting to look at that Kindle and see that you have 35 hours left right. to read the book and I'm a fast reader and so I think that you know trying to find that balance between something that's going to pull me in long enough to keep my interest and and retains all of the world building that I want because I think that's fantastic the world building that some of these people like Jared Ward she does such an mm-hmm. amazing job oh, she really does. That I own. I mean, you know, they build these huge worlds and yeah. I just, I build huge families. So <laughs> that's Hey, that's, that's amazing in itself. What, so speaking of Outlander quickly, are you a watcher as well as a reader? Are you yes. solely a reader? I'm both. Are you caught up? Cause I'm not, yeah. but I'm curious what you think. Are you? Oh my God, it's so awesome. Okay. <laughs> it is so, it's so worth it. Um, my husband, some of this stuff I have to drag him kicking and screaming into. And um, his brother actually started watching it and said, hey, have you heard of this series called Outlander? And um, so I think that it, that it transcends just Definitely. romance fans and, you know, historical fiction fans or however you want to call yourself. But, yeah, it's – the acting is so incredible. And the woman who plays Brianna is awesome. I know. So, so I know. awesome. Love She's her. good. Oh. So. Well, that's amazing. Um, I just want to remind everyone, obviously, Strung Up is out and available. Um, You can go purchase it on Amazon. Uh, You can also visit Lorelai James' website and uh, find all the information that you need. Thank you so, so much for joining us. I truly appreciate it. Absolutely. It's a pleasure, and you're always welcome back now that we've figured out our our technical difficulties. (laughs) <laughs> next year next year I already know Excellent. I know um what the characters that I'm doing for next year and I have the title and everything and so we were messing around a little bit with images today of kind of what we want to do for next year fantastic so. I love it I'm very excited all right well you have a great rest of your day and thanks everyone for watching uh have a good day Bye. thank you